We are talking about cyclamen today. I think most people know the big um, fluorocyclamen, uh, um, and you know the modern hybrids. You know the plants are often like this big, and they're like that tall in bloom. Um, that's cyclamen persicum, persicum meaning from Persia, and the, the wild parents of the fluorocyclamen are native to the Middle East, uh, and per Persia the, being the old name for Iran. Um, Cyclamen persicum is usually not winter hardy, it won't survive freezing temperatures. So if you took one of those florist cyclamen and planted in the outside, it would probably die over winter. The uh, easiest one to grow and probably the one that's available in the most uh, variety of seed strains is cyclamen heterofolium. Heterofolium means uh, leaf like ivy. Hetera is the scientific name for English ivy. And folium, of course, just meaning foliage. And the typical wild cyclamen heterofolium has a, a ivy-like leaf. Um, and, um, and even in the wild, the leaves are typically modeled with silver. I've, I've worked with cyclamen for many decades. I last century worked in a nursery that specialized in hardy cyclamen. And I can't remember ever seeing a cyclamen header falling with a solid green leaf. Um, now, you sometimes will get seedlings with, you know, a leaf that's mostly silver or even, uh, you know, obviously not silver, but I mean silver colored or solid silver. Um, and you wouldn't tend to see this kind of variation in the wild, but people have been growing cyclamen heterofolium for centuries, and over the years they've selected some with exceptional uh, foliage color and also different shapes of foliage. You see these two, though they are the same species, you see the leaf shape is quite different, and so there's some with real narrow leaves. And if you went in the nursery here, you'd see these different seed strains, and when you look at the flat, they're not all uniform. Um, because they're seed strains, these aren't clones. Uh, you know, like if you think if you take a cutting of a philodendron or something, well, every stem you root is a clone of the original plant, so they're absolutely identical. Well, the cyclamen largely are not grown uh, by that type of propagation. They're only grown from seed, so there's a lot of genetic vari variation within a seed strain. So the nice thing about buying them when they have the foliage, you can choose out the, the one you like the, like the best out of a seed strain. And then their offspring will often be very close to, you know, this is a narrow leaf seed strain, a lot of their offspring would be um, like the parent plant. But it's sort of like a litter of puppies where the parents aren't purebred, you know, a lot of them will look like a parents, but not all of them, so they're seed strains and not. Um, a really curious thing about cyclamen is that the flowers are produced up above the foliage, but after the flower is pollinated, the flower stalk doesn't, you know, like just, it doesn't stay up, it doesn't flop over. The flower stalk curls and draws the fruit down to ground level, and it's like this spring, and I'll pass that around and you can see it in the pot. And, um, the different species, some coil from the top of the flower stalk, some coil from the bottom of the stalk, and you know ultimately the whole flower stalk is coiled. And there is one species where the flower stalk doesn't coil, but it just flops over. And heterofolium is a fall, late summer fall blooming one, and those fruit will ripen about uh, May or so. Um, but when, the, when the, the fruit before it's ripe is really firm, and as it gets closer to ripening, the, the coiled flower stalk starts to relax and the fruit starts to get a little bit soft. And if you're collecting cyclamen seed, that's the time to collect it. Because if you wait until the fruit splits open, often things like slugs and ants will carry the seed around. There's a little fatty coat, coating on the outside of that seed that you know, an ant or another creature that carries away will eat, and that's the reward for the ant for taking the seed, because otherwise the seedlings come up right around the parent plant, and if you have an 
ant or somebody dispersing the seed, then you get sp spread out around. And they're, they're, they're ra rather easy to grow from seed. You would sow them as soon as you collect them or soon after because some seeds tolerate being dry for a long time, but cyclamen seed is, is, will germinate better if you sow, sow it soon after you collect it. And it won't germinate until the following winter. You know, you collect it in May, sow it, and it'll follow, uh, germinate that winter. Um, and a really curious thing about cyclamen, and I need to go back one step, flowering plants generally are, fall, fall into two groups, monocots and dicots. And of course, monocots have one seed leaf and dicots have two seed leaves. And cyclamen are dicots, so you would expect to see two seed leaves when it blooms. But one of those seed leaves becomes the tuber. Uh, you know, a tuber is, you know, in a general sense, we might call them bulbs, but, you know, technically it's not a true bulb, but it's another underground storage unit. So if you think of this as the bulb, um, one of the seed leaves becomes this bulb, and each year that bulb gets bigger, and cyclamen heterophyllum can eventually become about this big. Um, but so that's a curious thing about this plant because when it germinates, you don't see two seed leaves, but you only see one. And then the, if you have seedlings come up in the garden, they transplant readily. So if you end up with a little clutch of seedlings, don't be reluctant to transplant them to uh, new locations. So cyclamen heterophyllum um, will start blooming in late summer and bloom, you know, Probably its peak of bloom is in September and October, um, and it'll still have flowers after that. It's sort of like a long, slow buildup, a peak in September, October, and then uh, continue to bloom lightly for another month or so after that. They're worth growing for their flower display, but I think some of these foliage types are, are really uh, you know, worth growing. They come up, um, the foliage comes up early fall and then is real pretty all through the winter. We'll see some examples out in the garden. Yes, you had a question. Do they get eaten by rabbits? I've not known them to be eaten by rabbits. We recently have gotten skunks in the garden and they haven't gone after the cyclone, but I know in another garden, skunks sometimes root things up, dig things up. Um, and in a garden I used to work in that has a lot of cyclone and that was a problem until they fenced the garden. So cyclamen heterophyllum is the best one to start with because it's very forgiving. It, 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 it's, they're always described as needing good drainage, and I always think when somebody says it needs good drainage, they think like, you know, exceptionally good drainage, but really if you can grow a hosta or most ferns, um, then the drainage is adequate. Uh, like most plants that want good drainage, it really means avoid a place where the water doesn't drain after a rain. You know, there are plants that love wet sites like that, but cyclamen aren't. And their cyclamen heterophyllum is dormant in the summertime, so these are really excellent plants for shady gardens that are really dry in the summer or, or low, you know, areas in your garden that are real dry in the summer, like uh, trees like a maple that have a real shallow root system. They don't mind being dry in the summer, and then they, they come up in the fall, and um, there'll be adequate moisture and s sunlight at that point uh, through the winter months. Cyclamen silicium is another fall-blooming species. The leaves eventually get about twice this size. Um, this is a young plant. It's a much smaller plant than heterophyllum because heterophyllum, you know, as I mentioned, eventually the tuber can be, you know, almost the size of a dinner plate. And then the leaves come up and then the flower, the leaf stalks sort of sprawl out from the center. So the tuber might be this size, but the mass of foliage can be, you know, quite a bit bigger because they sort of sprawl out. But silicium is going to be a much smaller plant, little flowers up above the foliage. And there's another very similar species, uh, Cyclamen mirabile. Mirabile means like miraculous or uh, wonderful. And it looks very much like this, but the petals have a little fringe on them. Uh, but there aren't any to see today because it's fall blooming. And these are a little bit more difficult to grow, but it provided you make sure they have uh, good drainage, 
in a bright shady spot, they, they usually succeed. Cyclamen gracum, which means from Greece, we'll see in the garden. It's also fall blooming, a big sort of heart-shaped leaf, and quite similar to the florist cyclamen in appearance, but um, one that's fully hardy. An interesting thing about the different cyclamen is some of them will make roots from the top of the tuber and then they grow down. Some will uh, make roots from the bottom. And cyclamen gracum is um, unique in that it makes these permanent woody roots from the bottom of the tuber. So it needs uh, really well-drained soil that has drainage down you know, a good six inches or so because those long woody roots go down pretty far. There are a number of examples of cyclamen heterofolium in here. The thing I want to emphasize is cyclamen heterofolium does not need super drainage. Like this bed was created to have super drainage for these dry land plants that wouldn't succeed in our damp climate unless they had really good drainage. But they will tolerate it. But more often it's better in the shade garden. They will go dormant really quickly when the weather turns hot because um, they don't really like the full sun. But, you know, a real pretty one with ivy-shaped leaves, nice silver-leafed one. There are a few other species in here. Um, here's a real interesting um, hybrid between two cyclamen. Um, the, the parents are cyclamen heterofolium that we've seen lots of examples of, and the other parent is cyclamen gracum. And this leaf is very typical of a cyclamen gracum. See, it's not ivy-shaped, it's more like a heart shape. And that flower is coming off the plant, and that flower is really odd to me, be, seems really odd to me for two reasons. Both of its parents are fall blooming, so I don't understand why it's blooming now. And both of the uh, parents typically have pale pink flowers. Now nowadays, there are, the cyclamen header folium is available in several sort of brand new colors. And one of them is that rich purple, so maybe it's cyclamen header folium parent was that one. But that's not a, um, a typical color for either of those species. Um, if we just take, I know, we'll go this way. There are, you know, there's plenty of examples of cyclamen heterofolium in the garden. Mine may be rocks in it, it seems like, because you put them, it looks like they're nestling in the, in the rocks. Yeah, but my, my point is they don't need that. Yeah. They could just grow in your regular garden. You know, if you're growing things like hostas or ferns or, you know, camellias or you know other things that just need like normal soil. Cyclamen heterofolium is easy. Some people have gardens that are irrigated and they run the irrigation every Tuesday because it's Tuesday and it's programmed to run it every Tuesday. That's not the best kind of situation for cyclamen. They're used to dry summers so you know and they will tolerate if you have to water the garden in August because it hasn't rained for four weeks that's fine they will tolerate that. But they don't want to be constantly wet. But, you know, normal garden conditions, they'll be fine. Okay. When the cyclamen heterofolium is established, they start to get bigger leaves and make bigger masses. Yeah. That one is so beautiful. And, you know, I would grow that even if it never bloomed because the foliage no. is so beautiful. You know, this is silicium, and that's, sort of, that's one plant that's sort of full size. Yes. Yes, that's uh, we have. That's the only one we have for sale, other than heterofolium. This is cyclo cyclamen purpurescens, which means becoming purple, and all, nearly all the cyclamen species are from Mediterranean climates where they're used to dry summers and um, moist winters, sort of like California. Yeah, I was say, but yeah. purpurescens is native to the Alps. So it it's, will grow through the winter, but it, it's really more summer growing. Oh, okay. In the Alps, where there's very cold winters, it, it would be dormant in the winter, and, but then grow through the uh, mild but wet summers and blooms uh, through the summer months into the fall. Um, and that, this is a young plant, but 
in time, you know, a, an established perparacense plant would make a clump of foliage about like that. And the flowers are more often a, a darker pink, not a pale pink. This is Cyclamen coom, and this is the one that should be in full bloom now. Okay. Um, um, I, um, Cyclamen coom is not necessarily the most elegant or beautiful flower, okay. but it's, it's, if I could only grow one, I would grow one, this one, because, and you know, I'm, we're not talking about facts now, we're talking about personal opinion, okay. but um, Cyclamen coom will start blooming in late December and bloom all winter. Ooh. So I love anything that's blooming through the winter months because I don't like winter. And coom is quite variable in foliage. Some are solid green. Mo this is probably m most common where you have sort of like the almost like leaf pattern on the leaf. And, uh, and then in, you know, in gardens, uh, people have also selected solid leaf forms. And the most common flower color is a darker version of that, almost like a brilliant magenta. Okay. So, you know, you see it from a great distance often. Uh, I, I have to think it's probably a color that the bees see too. Yeah.